everyone. Um, once again, I'm bringing you something very slightly different from your regular content. Um, this is another game walkthrough. Um, I actually have, I, I basically have three games to um, show and demonstrate to all of you. Um, you've seen the Trial by Fire tutorial, you now have this one, and there is one more of that uh, coming up next week. And after that, I'll sort of intersperse doing regular tutorials with uh, full games. If, they, if you prefer one over the other, if you enjoy seeing full games that you can dive into, if you prefer seeing just individual tutorials, do let me know. So with that out of the way, let me introduce you to Mermaid Symphony. I made this over the course of a couple of days um, when I was recovering from an operation. <clears throat> and yeah, so this is it. You play as a mermaid um, and you are trying to collect treasure whilst dodging the falling obstacles. Um, it doesn't come across very well on the computer. Um, plus it's also being laggy as everything, uh, but it's basically designed for touchscreen phones best, um, and the mermaid sort of follows your cursor or wherever you're touching. Um, it's quite good fun actually, I've shared it with a bunch of friends, it's got some positive feedback and I might want to continue working on it, um, adding a bunch more features. Now one thing I have to, oh, firstly, uh, and I even plan to play it um, on the browser, well, this is how much I forget uh, what I prepared. Anyway, so yes, it's online, and I will link to it, uh, and you can play it um, on it, and, you know, feedback is appreciated. And as always, uh, you can find the game files uh, linked below. Now, one thing I do have to say that's very slightly different about this uh, game than others is that uh, I didn't do the art. Um, if you might have noticed, that art is way better than anything I've shown in any previous tutorial, and that is because I bought it. Uh, it was a $7 pack. I was looking around for like assets to use and this, there was a literally uh, a mermaid pack that was absolutely brilliant. Um, I bought it and uh, I will link down to it below, but one of the consequences of buying it is that uh, I am not allowed to share it. The license is for personal use only um, and yeah, can't, can't be shared. Um, so unfortunately the game files do not include any of the sprite assets, which means that if you um, download this and try to run it, you'll be able to see all of the events, you'll be able to see how it all puts together, but you would need to either buy the pack and um, just put the files in the right places, or you'd need to exchange them for your own ones. So hopefully this should still be interesting from a seeing how it works perspective, but um, unlike all the other tutorials, you won't be able to just download this and play it. Now, which I'm sorry for, but um, you know, that's, this is the price of uh, using other people's work. You respect their wishes. So this is the game scene, there's only one scene, it's a good game, and there's a couple of behaviours but they're quite limited. Um, this was made a long time ago when my preference in making stuff was um, to put all of the uh, logic inside of the events uh, sheet, whereas now my, now my preference is actually to put it all inside behaviours. Um, so anyway, this is the game scene, there's a couple of layers, there's a UI layer, which I don't know if you can tell, uh, controls whether or not uh, you show a score or a health, and then there's a game over layer, which is uh, all of this on top. So yeah, when you die, um, actually, uh, uh, let me see if I can show you, because uh, I think it's animated quite well. Cool. So you have 10 health, and if we go out of our way to die... Um, so yeah, the, uh, the good things and the bad things. The good things are shiny, the bad things aren't shiny, and they will just spawn randomly from the top of the screen. Two. Oh, I missed that. One. There we go. Oh well, and so it floats down. It sort of does a little bob. Um, yeah. So that's all of it. That's uh, all of the setup. And there's only a couple of uh, environment variables. Uh, scene properties. Sorry. Uh, score and health. Um, and so this is where the logic is. Um, I started putting music in the game. I didn't properly optimize it or do it. So honestly, I wouldn't rely on that. Um, like some music and sound effects. Score, quite simple, you know, just update the score and the health string to uh, whatever it should be. Uh, player movement's kind of interesting. This is quite messy and um, this is sort of what doing things and behaviors helps sort out. But effectively, what it's saying is um, if it, we're basically saying if um, this, this gets the player to animate swimming. Um, you know, this uh, causes the player, I guess this is, this is a kind of interesting thing, it causes the player to um, lurp 
not lerp, tween to the, um, to the user's mouse or touch. Um, and one of the side effects of that is that the mermaid will always reach its destination in the same time. Um, I mean, so what that means is, in the game, if I click and drag, it appears to follow the mouse. But if I click entirely across the screen, it also goes there. And it's basically reaching, it's always reaching its destination at the same time. Which I think, which I found led to like a more consistent feel uh, for what the mermaid should be doing. Um, and this is all, th this last bit here is interesting in that um, it's how it handles uh, whether or not the um, the mermaid should be flipped. Actually, I should break down this um, this just a bit more because this is uh, from a behavior. Um, right. So this is what it does. So if your mouse is to the right of the mermaid, um, we want to say the mermaid's not flipped. If your mouse is to the left of the mermaid, we want to say the mermaid is flipped, and then we rotate it. If the side effect of uh, taking this out is that the uh, basically we always want the mermaid to be facing the right way so here it works but then there she's flying backwards and that's not what we want and so what we want is when the mermaid's moving left we want her to be flipped vertically um, so that she's always facing up and then we rotate her towards the mouse and then we uh, tween the position So that's, that's the main logic for getting the mermaid to always face upwards and always face towards the mouse. Um, and that took, a try, that took a bit of playing around with to get right. Um, so what this effectively says is, um, every 2.2 seconds uh, we create a treasure uh, randomly from one end of the screen to the other. It's not one end, it's, I, I've called it literally 55 pixels from the left and 55 pixels from the right. Um, that was just in because, you know, um, if a treasure spawned exactly on the edge, then it would only be half in, half out. I didn't want that, so there's just a little bit of a buffer room in the middle. And minus 100 means it starts at the top of the screen. And basically, whenever a treasure is spawned... Oh, uh, that's not what I wanted. Whenever a treasure is spawned, um, it has a behavior called fooler, which basically... Um, so the treasure... I guess this would have been uh, good to go over. So the treasure is actually um, four sprites, one after the other, just with a really long uh, timer. So you only ever see one of them. So when the treasure spawns, it automatically picks one of those uh, sprites to use. So that's how you get the different sort of images. And then it uh, just drops it. It, sets, it gives it a permanent force downwards. And uh, if the position of the object is uh, too far, is off the screen, you delete it. I could have used the, oh, I tried to use the um, the behavior of delete when off screen, but unfortunately because the object starts off screen, then it's just automatically deleted, so that was how I got around it. And yeah, if the player collides with a treasure, you add a score. Uh, obstacles is basically the same, except whereas treasure spawns every 2.2 seconds, obstacles spawns every 1.5, so there's always more obstacles on the screen than there are treasure. Um, and also, the obstacles uh, fall faster. Um, at least I think they fall faster. Do they? Ah, okay, fine. I completely forgot about that. So yeah, um, the fooler behavior has properties, uh, min speed and max speed to fall. So here we can see that, so treasure spawns every 2.2 seconds, um, and it falls between 70 and 450, whereas the obstacle spawns every 1.5 seconds and it falls between 150 and 500. So in general, the um, obstacles will fall, will appear quicker and fall faster than the treasure. And that leads to like what I thought was quite a nice sort of um, gameplay dynamic. Uh, and then there's a bunch of logic about um, whether to, how to set the player to hurt or to dead. Um, and how to make sure the animation plays correctly. Like a lot of this code, to, when if, if you ever see like, um, if you ever see like flipping the player, so like, uh, where was it? So if players collision with treasure. Well, I guess maybe just there. A lot of the code is basically around because this mermaid could be facing left or right. 
um, you need to make sure that you play the animation the right way up. And then finally, uh, uh, game over. So this is kind of a, a, a hacky way of doing things, but basically if you've got, if your health is uh, less than zero, then we tween the game over sign, which is the, the main background there. We tween that from its position down to the right position. And then what we do all of here is that we constantly update all the other elements because there's a lot of different there's a lot of other elements there's the dot there's the text there's a background image there's chains we basically continuously up and um, lock their position to be the same as that position plus an offset up down up down uh, and so that's how you get them all moving in tandem so there you go um, just about hit uh, almost 11 minutes of recording so that's probably a good place to stop uh, so that's the game uh, i recommend playing it on a mobile because it uh, worked quite well and yeah it's quite a nice casual game and it could be fun to do more work on it later um thank you very much for watching as always please leave um comments suggestions or questions or things you'd like to see in the future down in the comments um i really do enjoy uh, reading them and i will see you at the next one Ta -ra.